Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to episode four. We're at Fur, breaking bread with the boys. Everybody say hi. Hello. <laughs> Subscribe, like, comment, enjoy the show. <laughs> episode four, let's go back to where we left off. We were telling you guys how we ended up buying this building, which was always a dream shop of mine, which we are in till today. Once we bought that building, I basically called the Matt West company and I told them to off. They wanted to give us a 30 cent decrease in our rent from 11,500 they took 30 cents off we basically told them that we would not be extending our lease and we will start pulling everything out of there and we're moving out so when we started that process as i was telling you guys jeremy was convincing me to start a second branch another business so i could become 50 50 partners with him aside of gintani because i never wanted to give any portion of gintani up to anybody ever again after what i went through with the Jesse and Corey Dillon and all that. And I said, I would never put a partner into Gintani again. So we went back and forth. He was doing a lot of the tuning back then. I was still trying to learn how to tune the cars in between trying to do hardware and try to run the business. I didn't really have too much time to dedicate to, you know, learning how to use the editor software and all that other stuff. When we decided to revamp the new building and do construction, we had agreed that we were gonna open a new company. That company's name was gonna be called OE Tuning. I'm sure a lot of you guys have heard of OE Tuning. I used to be 50% owner of OE Tuning. We also built the second building, which is on our property right now. That was not originally there. We spent a lot of money putting that building up and we built that so Jeremy could work out of there. And we're doing pretty okay. Uh, we had slowly started getting newer customers and we had started doing built engines. We looked at it as a way of, we had to step away from the bolt-on like stuff where ESS had you know, basically taking over the market, thanks to Drew. So we started building, you know, the motors, rods, pistons, uh, sleeves. I mean, I've been through hell and back with those motor motors on those cars. I mean, there isn't one thing that I haven't possibly tried for the S65 and the S85 block. So we were constantly running into issues with the tuning side of stuff. And I was trying to figure out what was going on and it was, uh, really hard to you know understand what was happening because i was obviously not editing the software myself so i kept going back and forth to jeremy i'm like man there's something wrong we have these cars on the dyno and you know we're now trying to make big boost and big power and we're for some reason we can't get these cars to go below 18 degrees of timing and i was like dude are you sure you know what you're doing like this doesn't make sense it's impossible that the car is locked at 18 degrees of timing it should be able to pull all the way down to eight degrees you know that's just a safety margin that's put into ecus you know throughout all these cars you know you have a max table and you have a minimum table so a minimum target table is where if the car is knocking you know the ecu will actually let itself pull down all the way down to let's say eight degrees of timing so it sells it saves the motor from knocking itself to death but we were constantly having motors just knocking themselves to death when we started building these built motor high horsepower cars. And I think we went through five or six fully built motors that were literally just failing and having issues. And we we're cracking, you know, piston rings and we we're cracking, cracking the crown. And it, was, it had a bunch of detonation and we lost so much money. We were so scared back then to not basically say like, oh, it's a modified car. Like you were pushing it and whatever. And plus I was also like, scared to basically not take the blame on us we i we had to take the blame because i knew we were having an issue with tuning and we couldn't control this so i think throughout that time we bought like five or six replacement motors which cost me a lot of money i was paying for all these motors out of my pocket while all this was going on um jeremy would take uh trips tuning trips to you know new york dubai abu dhabi this and that and whatever and we were supposed to do like, I don't know, 10, 15 cars, 20 cars. And, you know, he would get paid and come back. And basically we wouldn't, he would come back. I would look through the invoices and everything. And he would come back and he would like have five cars, four cars, three cars. Oh, we only did like two cars. We only did this. We only did that. So I was like, I started questioning it. And I'm like, dude, what are you, are you, are you freaking like 
taking the money and sending it somewhere else and not depositing it into our account because it doesn't make sense and he obviously got crazy and he was like no no way i would never do that this is a guy that we basically took in he had no paperwork we paid for everything to get his visa done get him accepted into the united states i literally transferred money to his mom to australia so he could basically invest into a company over here and come to the united states and be able to work over here i signed for his apartment that he was living out of under my name went and bought this guy a brand new c63 under my name this guy lived out of my parents house for the first like six months that he was you know working with me and we're building the building he was literally living out of my parents house my mom was doing this guy's laundry like they were treating him like their own kid and gave him a car to drive before we bought the c63 and so on and so i was just like catching on i'm like dude something doesn't make sense like all this money we're hardly making anything you know i'm hardly seeing anything so one day we take a trip to new york to go and build a supercharged car in new york out of my buddy jj's uh dad's shop which is called low motion you guys i'm sure all you east coast guys have heard of him you guys know jj jj is a cool 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 dude he came and worked with us for a few years so we go to Lomotion and we're building this car for my uh, customer donnie which is still a really good friend and we're there working late at night just me and one of my techs and jeremy hadn't come out with us he was out um on a tuning trip somewhere else and whatever we're working late and then his dad orders some pizza and we're all sitting and having dinner at the shop and we're chit-chatting both and his dad's like you know i'm proud of you guys you guys are doing really good and this and that i'm like okay yeah you know we're doing okay you know it's not too great but we're doing okay he goes doing okay like man last time jeremy was here he did like 25 cars and i was like what 25 cars what are you talking about he goes yeah what do you mean i'm like uh i don't know anything about 25 cars this guy brought back money for like six cars and i was asking him like dude you were out there for this long like what the hell you only did six cars you know and he goes oh yeah it was slow and jj's dad great guy i admire that guy was such as such a nice man he takes me into the office and sits me down and gives me a nice long talk and you know explains stuff to me about business and how it works with partners on how some size stuff happens and you know we got to be aware of what's going on around us and keep our eyes open and this and that so he sits there and he shows me all these invoices that this guy's been basically charging for and not putting into our account meanwhile he's out putting like five thousand into our account sending fifteen thousand to his mom in australia and i guess the whole time he's been doing this selling said putting five thousand in our account six thousand in our account sending 10 grand to his mom 12 grand to his mom 20 grand to his mom and his mom's like putting the money away in australia and we have no idea about this i you know i catch on to this and i don't open my mouth at this point i'm extremely frustrated because you know this guy's basically stealing money going behind my back we've literally treated this guy like family he's blown up like six uh bmw m3 motors that i've had to pay for and replace in people's cars i keep asking him if he could figure out what the hell is going on with the tune he has no idea what's going on he can't figure it out so i'm in like this huge dilemma trying to figure out how we're gonna you know fix all this thing all these things and get ourselves out of it so i basically tell him listen i i don't trust you tuning these cars anymore i know how an engine works i put the engines together i know how everything works i need you to start teaching me how to use this software because i don't want you tuning any of my supercharged cars i'm gonna do it myself we're gonna start on my car give me the base map give me whatever it is give me the win os access i'm gonna sit there i'm gonna edit the file myself i'm gonna try to figure this out myself i don't trust you touching these cars anymore like it's enough i have him put the editor software with our licensing onto my laptop and i'm up every single night trying to figure out how to use this thing go through maps trying to figure out what's going on with these cars you know i had played with like aem stuff back then standalone stuff uh, on a couple cars which was obviously simple you know it's much easier to set up that than try to find maps in a factory ecu and try to do all the stuff in the factory ecu we didn't have all the stuff that we have now back then all the support and um, the information that we obviously have now so i was trying to teach myself how to use this thing i kept trying to figure out this whole ignition timing thing and i was having massive issues so as i'm trying to teach myself how to you know tune these cars i start getting phone calls from one of my buddies that lives right down the street from this guy literally the apartment right next door and he calls me and he's like hey man i got a question for you and i'm like what's up he goes 
but what does this guy do in the parking lot until like two in the morning every night? And I'm like, what? What are you talking about? He goes, dude, your partner, Jeremy, he goes every night until like one or two in the morning, all these cars roll up to the apartment and they go underground to the parking lot and he could see in the parking lot, you know, you could, there's like gates and you could see inside. And he goes, man, they're like hanging out there until like two in the morning, almost like three, four times a week. And I'm like, bro, are you serious? Like, what the f I'm like, all right, man, you gotta like literally start watching this and seeing what they're doing and record it for me and send it to me so I know what's going on. So I guess this guy, the whole time we're working at the shop, he was also working with uh, a mutual family friend of mine, which we've put stuff in the past now and we're cool. You know what I'm talking about if you ever watch this. So I guess this guy was driving cars over from OC at night and they were meeting up at Jeremy's apartment and they were literally tuning cars for his shop at Jeremy's apartment at nighttime after work and Jeremy was pocketing all the money and sending it to Australia. Goes further to find out that this guy had actually set up an office in OC out of this guy's shop and was starting to go there during the week, a couple days and not showing up to work and tuning cars out of this guy's office. So I had my friend record all this stuff. I had no choice but to try to find out a way to find somebody who could teach me how to tune these cars the correct way, teach me how everything works and so on. I sent an email to my really good friend for years now. Um, his name is Guy Freeling. He actually makes all our little end user cables uh, that we send out to people to be able to tune their cars. And uh, I reached out to Guy and I said, hey Guy, there's this one guy that I keep hearing about. Everybody calls him Master Yoda. And I've been hearing about this guy for years. I've always wanted to meet him. I've always wanted to try to learn from him and Jeremy would always talk about him. Oh, he's the best. He's the king. He knows everything. It's because of him, the aftermarket and this and that. And I was like, all right, all right. And I would hear Guy talk about him and a bunch of other people. But he was very like secretive. Nobody knew who he really was. And I called Guy and I'm like, you have to help me, please. Like try to find this guy, put me in touch with this guy. I need somebody to help me like figure this out. I need somebody to teach me, train me how to tune these cars and figure out all this stuff myself. I've, this guy's cost me so much money. I got like nothing left. I'm literally at the verge of like closing the doors down if I don't basically learn how to do this myself. Guy's like, okay, let me reach out to him. Let me send an email. I'm gonna CC you on the email, write your story, basically tell him what's going on, explain to him and see if he answers back. He goes, I can't guarantee you anything, but for you, I'm gonna do it, you know? So he sends the email, he CCs me with this guy and I'm like, I gotta try to somehow get this guy to come help me, you know? So I write this, long email basically pouring my heart out telling him everything i've gone through in the last you know three years and the fact that i'm having to constantly replace motors and having to come out of my pocket to make all these customers happy because the guy that's basically tuning for me has no idea what the hell he's doing and i need to start doing this myself i need to take control over it i need to be able to tune these cars myself and not rely on anybody else i don't want any more partners i don't want to do any of this crap anymore so I sent him a long message and then um, he sends me a message back basically saying, okay, it's gonna cost you this much to bring me out. I want a five-star resort. I want business class seats and this and that. This is the date I could come out. That's it. Cold message, bro, email, you know? I'm like, damn, this guy, who the hell is this guy? <laughs> so I'm like, all right, whatever, whatever you want, man. I'll get you the best hotel I can. I'll get you business class seats for two or whatever. I just want you to come out here. So. And I'm flying this guy down to come and help me. Meanwhile, Jeremy has no idea that I know everything at this point. We kept it very secretive. I didn't come at him with anything. I didn't tell him that I knew he was, you know, doing business with the guy at OC, the, you know, doing stuff where he's flying all over the place and putting money in his mom's bank account. So I basically just put my case together before, you know, I approached him with anything. So I fly this guy down. I go to the airport. I pick him up. And he's just not like trying to get stuff going, like talking to this guy, you know, and he's just like cold guy, straight, like serious. You know what I mean? I laugh when I say he's so serious and all this stuff now, because now he's like literally my second brother. So I, I, I go pick him up. We drop off his stuff and we get to the shop and Jeremy's not there because he has been in OC the night before tuning cars out of this other guy's shop. So he hasn't showed up to work yet. And we have my uh, E90 M3 on the dyno. And I have my window OS set up. I opened it up and I had the file that was in the car that was having the issue with pulling the ignition timing back and so on. 
and I'm showing Mr. Master Yoda next to me, this is the problem. This is the file in the car. You know, this is what's happening. And he's like, give me that file. So I give him the file. He puts it on his computer and he starts going through the file. And he's like, where the hell did this guy get this file from? And I'm like, why? He goes, man, it's hilarious because there is stuff from my work in here and other companies. And he goes, this is like literally a complete mix up of like every other company from Europe to here that's making supercharger kits for this car. He goes, basically, this guy's taken a read from these cars and he's taken the files and he's made them into one file and it's like everything's all over the place he's got changes from one guy changes from this guy changes from that guy then he has his own changes in there and all this stuff and it's like he goes this thing is a complete show and i'm like okay like how are we gonna fix this and he goes we're gonna start from zero from scratch zero i'm gonna set you up a map pack make you a thing and we're gonna i'm gonna teach you how to use it i'm gonna teach you how to tune this car you're gonna tune this car today then i was i was already like trying to do it myself for like a few months you know what i mean so but i could still never figure out what the hell was going on with the whole timing situation and why the motors were blowing up we're going through the maps and he goes oh my god he goes what was the problem you were having and i go you know we started building these built motor cars and we started you know raising the boost and we're having problems controlling the timing the timing was always locked at 19 degrees it would never go below 19 18 19 degrees he goes you see this map over here that you have in your project that this guy has a named ignition table he goes well yes this is the ignition table but he goes this is not an ignition table for you to be messing with he goes this is the minimum ignition timing table so do you realize what is wrong in this minimum ignition timing table and i'm looking at it i'm like uh yeah i do this guy's basically taken the lowest factor basically was eight degrees the car could pull out all the way to eight degrees ignition timing and he's changed it thinking that it's a an aim table and he's changed it to 19 degrees so basically the car is locked at 19 degrees ignition timing it can never pull anything less than that it can't go less than that no matter if the car is you know got no fuel it's pinging overheating whatever the timing is completely locked at 19 degrees we would never be able to pull it any lower than that so i'm like oh my god so this is the reason this cost me six motors like this stupid table not knowing you know how to use it or what it is and he goes yeah so basically sets up my timing table and sets up my whole map pack and we start tuning this car and i think the car was on the dyno and back then it was making like i don't know 500 wheel or something like that my personal car and we started retuning this car and as we're tuning it we're in the dyno room jeremy walks in and he walks into the you know the little dyno the viewing area and then his office is right behind it and he walks in and he's looking like the hell's going on in there you know like who the hell is this guy sitting next to alex and he doesn't really say anything he goes and sits in his office and we're in there tuning this car and all of a sudden the car goes from 500 to 560 wheel we pick up 60 wheel horsepower the ignition timing is working perfectly the fueling is working perfectly everything's cool i have everything under control i have all the maps i know exactly what i'm doing dude i'm feeling great you know i'm so happy i'm like i got this like i could finally do this myself without relying on anybody he spends a couple more days here teaching me how to you know work one of us and guiding me through it obviously helping me out with map packs and all that stuff to set up the cars and we're about to leave to lunch and jeremy walks up to me he's like hey what's going on in there and i'm like what, what none of your business dude like don't worry about it and he was like who is that guy i'm like none of your business you don't need to know who he is and he's just trying to figure out who the hell the guy is that's trying to help me out so i look at him i'm like you know you've always dreamt of working with somebody for years and try to get information from them i go that's him and he just like completely turned white and he was like what how is he here how'd you get him here how is he here and what are you doing this and that i go listen bro today's the day to break it to you Go inside your office, pack all your shit, leave my car keys on the table, and get the out of my shop. And he was like, what? And I'm like, dude, we have everything on you. All the money you stole, all the stuff you've been doing at night, working out with this other guy in OC. We have everything. We have everything documented. We have proof of all the transfers you've had made to your mom's account. We have videos of you guys tuning cars in the middle of the night at your apartment. We have everything. So I go, look, get your stuff and just get out of here. So he's like tripping out at this point. Like, oh, dude, I'm screwed. You know, they, they got me. So we leave to lunch. Of course, this guy grabs some of his stuff and then he grabs some of my tuning tools with him. 
and he takes off and he takes my C63 with him. We basically try to find him for like almost two months. So I guess he books it, goes and is living in OC now out of this guy's shop that he's working with, tuning for this guy. We try to go find him over there. We can't find him. I'm trying to get my car back. He's hidden my car. We have no idea where my C63 is. He's basically now not paying the rent on the apartment that's under my name. So we're starting to have to pay for that. We're paying for the monthly payments on the C63 and we can't get a hold of this guy. So he's changed his phone number, so on. Nobody wants to tell us where the hell he is. So one day we get a phone call from my buddy. It's like one in the afternoon and he goes, man, I swear to God, I think I just heard this guy pull up into the street to go to the apartment. I'm like, no, bro, you go down there right now and check if he's there. So my buddy runs down, he looks and he sees him pulling into the parking lot. So he goes, dude, he's here. And I'm like, oh, okay, this is it, let's go. So me and my buddy, Brian, which used to be a tech at our shop for years, which is a, like a family member now. We jump in the car, I call these friends of mine that do car repos and I'm like, bro, where are you guys? And he's like, oh, we're like right around your shop. I'm like, dude, I need you to do me a favor right now. And they're like, what's up? I go, I go, I got to repo my C63. He's like, what the hell are you talking about? I go, this guy just showed up after two months. He's at the apartment. He parked the car. The car's inside. I need you to go pull that car out of that parking lot and repo it. He's like, all right, we're on the way. These guys go there. And I guess um, with our luck, his parking lot had a gate, but it was trash day. So the trash guy was there picking up the trash and the gate was open. So my boys roll up with their tow truck and they look and then they go, the gate's open. So they roll inside go reverse up to the car grab the car strap and pull it out and me and brian roll up at the same time while they're pulling the car out of the parking lot and basically jeremy comes downstairs and he's like oh my car my car and i jump out of the car and i'm like hey bro this ain't your car and you're done we get into it pretty bad everybody got involved cops mops this and that and then uh basically i told them don't ever come anywhere close to us and then after that we filed a lawsuit against him because we had all the proof of all this money had he had stole and all that stuff that lawsuit ended up costing me like almost 60 grand with lawyers we got a two hundred ninety thousand dollar judgment against him which we haven't collected one penny on till this day because he filed bankruptcy i guess uh, he could come into the u.s and screw people as a non-us citizen and then just bounce to your own country and get away with everything so this guy literally screwed us for over $350,000. I have a $290,000 judgment against him. We never got a penny out of it. And now he's in Australia making tacos or something. I don't know if uh, he really is in Australia. I guess he made a, he opened a restaurant in Australia or something and he makes tacos. I think OE Tuning is still in business. He does business under OE Tuning. So, hey guys, if you guys are buying anything from OE Tuning, please don't. You're buying from a scammer. That was uh, the story with my number two, Jay. We started tuning all the cars ourselves. We we're the first ones to do like E85 files for these uh, M3s and M6s and so on. We started putting bigger blowers on them, built motors. You know, we made like 800 wheel horsepower. We made 980 wheel horsepower on a M6 V10 before we maxed out the blower. We were doing really good. Uh, we had the fastest cars out there, fastest uh, 60 to 130s, fastest half mile. And when we were building really, really cool stuff, uh, but the engine for those cars was a nightmare. The block was trash. They were actually made in three different foundries. They had like uh, impurities in the casting. And when you started to make a lot of power, it would literally, if you tried to put studs in the heads, it would try to lift the head and it would crack the block. And then you'll have coolant spraying out from the valley of the block. So we went through hell with those motors. We literally tried to design everything to try to make it strong and try to make big power. I even went as far as being stupid enough to waste time and develop a twin turbo kit for that car because everybody said that it was impossible to do. And I was so cocky and arrogant at that point. And I was like, I'm going to do it. So we basically pulled the motor in and out of the car. I don't know how many times to build a turbo kit for these cars. We succeeded. We made a turbo kit for it. Um, we probably built like four or five of those cars. I just wasn't happy with the market. I wasn't happy with where everything was going with those BMWs. I decided it was time. I just wanted to pull out of it and just basically change the entire 
aspect of the company. Just like previously when we had that problem with Drew's car with the bearings and we were blamed for it because of our supercharger, even though it had nothing to do with it. I, was, I just had a really bad taste in my mouth. Back then we were also racing Time Attack with uh, Paul Walker's car. It was also around the same amount, same time as one whole, uh, Drew's whole situation went down with this motor. And on our last race during the Time Attack thing, um, I, we pulled the car off the track and I could hear a bit of ticking coming out of the motor and I basically told the guys to shut it down, don't run the car anymore, we gotta take it to the shop and take it apart. We took that car to the shop, we pulled the motor apart and if you guys actually ever search it, like I think in 2000 and, what was it, 2010 or something like that or 2009, we have a video on YouTube. I'm like really young back then and uh, I basically have Paul Walker's motor completely apart on a table and I'm trying to explain to everybody like the bearing situation with these S65s and S85 motors and back then people used to laugh at us you know they were like oh you guys are just trying to use it as an excuse to you know blame it not blame it on your supercharger kits you know messing up the rods and this and that and I'm like man this has nothing to do with our supercharger kit and we made this whole video about it and we're like, these cars are gonna have massive bearing issues. I mean, I don't care if it's a stock car, I don't care if it's a supercharged car, whatever it is, BMW is gonna have a big time problem with these bearings because the tolerances were like unbelievably tight. The car had oil starvation really bad. It had really bad sloshing problems from the oil pan. You know, we were just getting blamed for all this. And back then when, you know, rods were flying out the side of the blocks of these cars, because of problems with the bearings, we were so scared to mess up our name that we were literally just buying people motors so we don't mess up, you know, our reputation. And, you know, we were just like covering all this. But after a while, we put that video up and everybody was like, oh, no, you guys are trying to cover up for yourselves. And then all of a sudden, all these cars just started dropping like flies left and right. People were just dropping rods on the middle of the freeway, on the middle of the streets, holes and blocks everywhere. And all of a sudden people became bearing experts and they started making bearings for them and doing all this stuff. Meanwhile, years before we had already told them like, this is a huge problem with this car. Nobody wanted to listen to us until, you know, everybody's cars started dropping like flies. And now everybody's a bearing professional and they make um, all kinds of new bearings with different tolerances and all this different stuff that we used to tell people to do and people would laugh at us. We went through all that stuff with these motors. I went through sleeving these blocks, trying to make them stronger. Meanwhile, learned that, you know, sleeving this block was actually weakening it instead of making it stronger because when we used to go to machine the block out and put the sleeve in, the backing material that was left in the block was so thin. What was happening is when these things were getting hot, the back base material was cracking and it was dropping sleeves. So we were having all kinds of sleeve issues. We we're obviously having all the cracking issues because of the casting and the block wasn't strong. And there was so many impurities in the casting. There's um, a part in the block on these cars that has a boss that sticks out that one of the chain rails that bolts to it and the chain runs on it for the for the head, for the bonus units and all that stuff. And it's got a boss that sticks, sticks out of the, the block for that. And these castings were so bad in these motors that um, on some of the motors, we would go in there to try to put the screw in to that boss so it could hold the chain rail. And as we were putting the screw in, that boss would literally crack off and fall. And we would look behind it and it would just literally still be sand, like porous sand in the casting. Like the casting was so dirty and it wasn't nice that there was impurities in the casting and it would just break off. So we would have to like weld it back in and refix it and do all this stuff. So yeah, we made the turbo kits for them, which was a... Uh, whole nother crazy thing we built five of those they were too expensive people didn't want to pay for it and then we started doing a bunch of uh stock motor e85 big power stuff you know making 700 wheel on um stock motors on the v8 m3s making 800 wheel on the m5s on stock motors i was having fun doing it but um you know our competitors were selling kits for a lot cheaper than we were obviously you couldn't compare our kit to their kit back then when people used to buy our kit call to buy our kit they would be like oh but ess sells it for this much and vf sells it for this much and active sells it for this much and you guys are like four thousand dollars more and we would try to explain to them like just because it's a supercharger kit doesn't mean every kit is equal you know we use a different blower we use different bracketry they use all the factory pulleys we don't we make a whole drive system for our supercharger kits our intercooler cores are a lot bigger than theirs our 
plenums are made completely different. The blow off valves we use, the brand of stuff we use, the hoses, the fittings, all of that adds on, you know what I mean? Like we never used push on hoses and with a clamp, you know, everything was all AN fittings. We used all custom uh, Bell intercooler at a liquid cores that were made was like double the size of ESS's kits. That's why our kits never had heat soaking issues, just like everybody else's has. Now, a lot of people are like, damn, man, I wish we bought your kits back then instead of buying what we bought. We're putting a lot of time and money into making our kits like overly built, trying to make them, you know, bad. We're more expensive than everybody else. It came down to a point where, you know, the, the cost played a huge role. They were selling a lot more kits than us. With all the problems with these engines and failures, I was sick and tired of doing them, you know? I just wanted to move on and do something different. I was traveling a lot back then, going to Dubai, China, and this and that. And when I was out there, I was tuning a lot of exotics or we doing a lot of Ferraris and Lambos and stuff like that. So I was always had a dream as a kid to build Lamborghinis and Ferraris and stuff. So I always wanted to get into that. But the problem is with the market in the US, you know, it's not like going to China or Abu Dhabi or Dubai and tuning, you know, people's cars over there over here. If you don't own the car, nobody trusts you with their cars. And I was, you know, wanting to get into that market. And I realized that, that, you know, these M3s and M5s, M6s and stuff like that, they're not going to get me where I want to be. I was literally discussing with my guys, my brother, my best friend, Ruben, that, you know, has taught me everything I basically know uh, when it comes down to tuning. And I was telling them like, hey, dude, we got to stop working on these cars, I'm ready to call it quits. Like I'm not even going to sell any more supercharger kits. I want to move into doing exotics, move into doing more tuning, more exhaust systems and stuff like that. I decided that's it. It's done. Um, we're not, we're not doing this BMW stuff anymore. It was like cold Turkey, man. We went from having like, we still probably have 10, 15 kits on the shelves. just sitting there. I mean, we have castings, we have everything. I just walked into the shop one day and looked at the guys and I was like, we're done, dude. Don't sell anymore. Anybody calls, they want to buy a supercharger kit. They want to buy anything for a supercharger kit, turbo kit for an M5, M6. Tell them we don't sell it anymore. We just closed the book. That's it. And we moved on, man. That's what started what basically Gintani is today. Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to the new shop. Come on in. Let's give you guys a little bit of a teaser. We're not going to obviously show everything. Plus, everything's not done yet. To everybody who's waiting for a product and for us to work on your cars, trust me, we're trying to go as fast as possible. Moving is not easy at all. This last week has been torturous for every single one of us. Me, my guys, we're all doing our best. So please, please just stay patient with us while we're trying to get all your products done and all your stuff shipped out. We're gonna get on it, I promise. Hopefully by the mid, mid next week, we'll be fully operational. As you guys can see behind me, the waiting room area is completely empty. We haven't even focused on putting any of the furniture in or anything like that. Our main focus is to get the cars going and get the production going for the exhaust systems and so on. Trying to finish the dyno room so we could get a couple cars that we have here on the dyno. Over here uh, will be our like smart lounge kind of setup area. We're gonna use this place for customers to come and hang out. We'll have a simulator hopefully over there for people to sit down and play while they're waiting. We're building a back table in the middle over there that's gonna have a V12 6.5 liter Aventador engine sticking out of the glass. Uh, four seats, we'll have a full wet bar so you guys can enjoy some drinks if you want, some espresso, hang out. I'm gonna have a big island over here in the middle where we will take all your orders. We'll have a big white whiteboard over here where we could go over all the options for your builds sit down with you, basically go through everything in the list, write down everything, look at all the options. We have TVs everywhere so we could connect our laptops to it, so we could basically do a full build out with if, if it's wheels, suspension, body kit, whatever it is. At this place, we're gonna be able to do all of that. Now we have the space. We're gonna be doing a lot more service, maintenance, repair stuff for all the exotic cars. We've done everything we can to make this place like a science lab. So it's gonna be beautiful, always clean, your cars will be in good hands and we're going to try to make this very um, fun and something that you guys could enjoy when you come here. We'll have cars and coffee on the weekends and so on. You know, nothing's really been cleaned yet. We still got to clean all the glass and everything. We got people coming on Sunday to clean up the floors. My car just came back, the 348 RWB. I sent it out to Long. Long had touched up some stuff. Nakai son was actually down here and he came and saw the car himself. The car is signed by him, sadly. I am putting that car up for sale. 
I, it hurts me to do it, but it's gonna go up. So first person who has $500,000 takes it. We're gonna do um, color correction, paint correction, full PPF. We're getting the stereo system redone inside and touching up a little bit of powder coating on the intake manifold and the valve covers and so on. Gonna put it up for sale. We had a customer now out in Australia that was supposed to buy it. He might still buy it, we don't know, but guys, right now, bids are open. If anybody's interested of one of two RWBs to ever be built, Ferrari, that he ever built, that he ever will build, he'll never build another one. We got the cleanest one over here and I'm gonna have to sell it, but. Let's walk over here. This will be the lounge, you guys can chill out and Obviously, you'll be able to look inside the shop while you're hanging out over here. This is not for employees. The only time we will be using this area is when we're doing a project. We have a project build. We will come in here with the guys, go over some of the you know, work that we need to do to the car and plan the project with twit wheels and stuff we're gonna be doing. We have a nice whiteboard that I, that's coming in for our projects and stuff so we could we'll sit down with the guys and discuss everything. Over here, we have a private bathroom for our customers only customers, not for employees, not for anybody else. It's not fully done yet, but you guys can see nice, clean. And then up here is where we lead up to my office and a couple of the other guys' offices. We'd have a door that separates this hole downstairs from the upstairs. So nobody could just come up here and just run into our offices. That's, that's not gonna happen. On this side, we have a little sales. We got a sales office over here for the sales guys. NJ's office over here, which is the only one that actually has some furniture in there, even though we ordered the wrong chair. We gotta change that. We're just building some stuff in there right now, some cabinets and stuff, but this office is actually gonna be for my brother. Nice big office. We're gonna get him a really nice table, nice furniture. We got our patio over here where we could obviously just chill out, look over the shop, make sure everybody's working. It's also a nice place to just look at all the beautiful cars that are getting worked on and come around here. And this, guys, is my dream office. This is an office that I've always wanted. I always wanted an office that was all glass and overlooking the shop where I can keep my eyes on everybody, keep my eyes on the projects, make sure the guys are working, make sure everything's going right. Obviously, it's echoing like crazy in here right now because we got no furniture. But again, the first thing for us and the most important thing for us to get is to get the shop going. We could do all this later, which we're actually working on. This has been a dream for me to have an office like this and build a modern shop. That's basically what we wanted. We wanted to make this like a dealership, but very cool inside, very modern, very techy. That's basically it. I hope you guys enjoyed it. We'll give, show you guys a little bit more later on once everything's cleaned up. Everybody was asking for a little quick update of the shop and what it looks like. I hope you guys like it. Took a lot to do this and really, really drained every single one of us. So I hope you enjoy. We'll see you on the next episode. Thank you.